The Great Depression of the 1930s ushered in Keynesian economics. The stagflation, stagnating economy, high inflation in the 1970s ushered in a new thinking monetarist economics. We've now got this world depression, world stagnation. It's time to usher in some new economic thinking. Growth basically comes from two, two areas. It comes from demand. People wanted to buy goods and services. And if you want to buy goods and services, firms and individuals produce and provide those goods and services. That generates economic activity. The second area that growth comes from is new ideas, new technology and innovation. If we come up with new ideas and new technology, we generate new products and new goods and services. What we need in terms of the global economy and individual economies like Britain is higher levels of aggregate demand and continued investment in new technology and innovation. There's three major elements to, to a new view of economics. I think, first of all, economics itself needs to be a bit more humble and a bit more relevant. Um, economists are tended to think that their subject um, can explain uh, why people do what they do, why firms do what they do. They can only partially explain that. It needs to be less driven by uh, exactitude, less driven by mathematical precision. Maths can be useful, but we're not all driven by a mathematical algorithm. So economics needs a bit more humble and needs to learn more from other subjects, be it psychology, sociology, management, geography, and so on. So we need to be, reframe economics in terms of the way it can help to explain economic behavior. Secondly, we need to think about the role of the state in providing goods and services. And there's lots at the moment about cutting budget deficits and reducing the size of government. Well, if we look at the size of government in the major countries since the Second World War, government's got bigger in all countries. In Britain, America, Europe, it's got bigger. Is that a bad thing? Well, what's driving it? Primarily what's driving it is as countries get richer, we need to provide more education and health for our citizens. We want better education for ourselves and our children. We want to live longer and better lives. The state increasingly provides those services. So we've got to see is the role of the state providing important goods and services for growth and well-being, particularly education and health. The third element is about technology and innovation. There's too much of a view that technology and innovation is driven by the single-minded scientist, the single-minded entrepreneur taking risks, the venture capitalists. They're part of the equation, they're part of the system. But in terms of long-term growth and innovation, we need investment in science and in ideas. That increasingly comes from the state, because we invest in blue sky research, we invest in new ideas. We don't know what their impact will be on the economy, but often those ideas generate economic growth in the future, in the next 20 years, next 50 years, next 100 years. There's a big issue now about we need to reduce the size of, of public sector debt to generate economic growth. Well, actually, if we increase, decrease public sector debt now, we're likely to decrease economic growth. First of all, let's think about where our current problems came from. Our current problems came from private sector debt in the financial sector and in the private sector. The public sector then stepped in to deal with a problem. Now we've got higher levels of public sector debt. What happens if we cut public sector debt? We will actually reduce economic activity and reduce growth and reduce the ability to service that debt in the future. What we need to think about is what is debt for? What, we, what are we using debt for? Are we using debt to buy goods and services to consume or are we using debt to invest in new capacity, new plant and machinery, new ideas? Debt can be a positive thing if it's in debt for investment, if it generates economic growth. And debt Debt-funded investment is very important in the public sector because the public sector can provide new science, new ideas and new infrastructure for future growth. We don't want to leave a legacy of debt for our children, but even worse, we leave a legacy of slow economic growth. Stagnant economic growth in the future will, meet, will affect the prosperity of our children. So we need to be thinking about investing today, which may involve debt, so we can have higher growth in the future and then debt will repay itself. We've got a lack of vision about a growth strategy in the UK. What, how do we generate growth? Where is it going to come from? There is no growth strategy in the UK. There's just a focus, a short-term focus on cutting debt, and cutting debt can slow growth in the short run and may harm growth in the long run. What we need is a vision about growth. How do we generate growth? We generate growth by getting people back to work and increasing economic activity. We get growth by generating new ideas and technology. It is the time now for the public sector to invest in new infrastructure, new ideas and new technology because that will increase economic growth over the next few years but also will generate a platform for future economic growth and it's a good time to do it. It's a good time to do it because the economy has got slow growth but also low interest rates and it's very easily fundable. We need a public sector investment strategy, we perhaps need a public sector investment bank to generate long-term growth in the UK.
The government sees the, the remedy uh, for our malaise to print more money. And the idea is that if you print more money, it will go through the banking system and then will go to individuals, small firms, individuals and big firms, who will then spend. So we think, basically we think, oh, private sector debt, that's a good thing to get us out of the economy, while public sector debt's a bad thing. Well, that's a false comparison. Actually, it depends on what you're spending the money for. Are you investing the money or are you consuming the money? So the idea that private sector debt is good and public sector debt is bad, I think is erroneous. But secondly, as you point out here, there's a real problem. It depends on how the banking system operates. The government's printing money, but largely the banks aren't passing much of this on to the private sector because the banks are rebuilding their balance sheets. They're, they're scared of the debt that they've incurred during the financial crisis. So printing money, as I think Keynes said, is a bit like pushing on string. It just doesn't work under the circumstances we've got at the moment or doesn't work very well. There are those doubt, undoubted problems of high levels of debt acting as a constraint on growth and a lack of economic vision to generate economic growth. On the positive side, we do see newly emerging economies. They've, have, they've have had their problems, but if we get growth in the rest of the world, we get continued growth in China, in India, in South America, that will help the world economy. We shouldn't think of those countries just as competitors, but they will also be consumers. They'll buy our goods and services and, and our technology and our ideas, and that will help our growth. So emerging economies are are a positive. The other long-term view we must bear in mind is that since the Industrial Revolution in Britain, we were the first industrial nation, new ideas and new technologies have emerged and those new ideas and new technologies have generated future economic growth. If we can carry on investing in new ideas and new, tech new technology, they will ensure future economic growth. It's important that we continue to invest in science and technology and ideas. That will generate the economic growth for our future and for our children in the future.